Thank you uh, to Skybridge, to An Anthony, for having us. Um, you ever, you know that feeling you, you walk into a dark room and you're sort of fumbling around in the blackness and you're searching? There's got to be a switch, right? There has to be some way to turn on the light, but you just can't find it. Where is it? H how do you do it? Life feels a lot like that sometimes. And so does the pursuit of a cure. My name is Will Reeve, and I am the proud son of Christopher and Dana Reeve, and I am a board member and ambassador for the Reeve Foundation. Go forward. Two words, three syllables, one course of action. Go forward was the rallying cry for the Reeve Foundation and my family after my dad died 11 years ago. 11 years. That is a long, long time. I'm proud to report that we have made tremendous strides in that time at the Reeve Foundation. We have a clearer, more specific mission now. Today's care, tomorrow's cure. My dad was injured on May 27th of 1995, Memorial Day, and spinal cord injury research was in its infancy. Here we are now, 21 years later almost, and we're all grown up. Innovation rules the field. We've got basic science being turned into human application. And it's truly incredible to see, 21 years later, the strides that we have made. And my dad used to say, at first, your dreams seem impossible. Then they seem improbable. Then finally, when you summon the will, they become inevitable. My dad knew that cures for spinal cord injuries were inevitable. And if you're wondering, 20 years later, what What's changed in those 20 years? What has brought spinal cord injury research from that darkness and brought it into the light and illuminated it? The answer is fairly straightforward and emblematic of our times. It's the power of technology. Technology. One word, four syllables, unlimited possibilities. Oh, to be a rat. My dad used to say that to me all the time when I was a little kid, and I had no idea what he was talking about until I figured out what he meant. And what he meant was that as a human being, he was frustrated that all this promising research that was being done in the field was not turning into real, tangible solutions. Because my dad always wanted to be on the front lines, on the cutting edge. And he was a catalyst for many of the early discoveries in activity-based therapies and regenerative medicine. And I'll share that quote with you again. At first, your dreams seem impossible, then they seem improbable, and then finally, when you summon the will, they become inevitable. Because he did know that it would be an inevitability. And thanks to this technology, we will be able to cure spinal cord injury. Can we go back one, please? Um, because re recently, I have to share this with you because this is why I'm here. Recently, we discovered, we had, we, we discovered the probably biggest breakthrough in spinal cord research history. Four young men who were completely paralyzed were able to stand and to move their legs and to regain these functions that so many of us take for granted, like bowel control, bladder control, sexual function, temperature regulation. These were unprecedented recoveries, and they happened by repurposing 
an epidural stimulator, which is typically used to treat chronic pain. What happens is the stimulator gets implanted in a patient's back, and when it's turned on, it reminds the spinal cord of all its possibilities, even years after injury. And we at the Reed Foundation were thinking, we have to get this to more people. So we launched the big idea, which is a campaign to raise $15 million to fund the next round of research to measure the impact of this device on a larger, broader, more diverse patient group. It's truly remarkable what's happening. Because right now, the, the, the device is like a cell phone from the 90s. It works, but it's not sophisticated enough yet not to promote stepping, but it does restore these functions these health and motor functions right now, and that's key because we're going to get to the smartphone version, but the current device is transforming lives right now, and therein lies the mission of the big idea, to get the current device to clinic and to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, to transform lives right now. And I could keep telling you about all this, but it would be much better if I just showed you. So please take a look. It was a pretty normal day. August 26, 2010. I was out practicing. I was standing in my driveway. I was told that I was paralyzed from the neck down. There was no hope for me to regain any mobility or movement. I first stood on day three of turning the stimulator on. It makes me feel normal again. It was overwhelming. The epidural stimulator sends generalized electrical signals to the spinal cord. It reminds the spinal cord of its potential. What we're doing is something that they've never even thought about before. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, something like this can change the world. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the fourth patient of that initial study, a real life superhero, Dustin Shilcox. Thanks. Thank you. Now, before I begin, I want to ask everyone here to close your eyes. And now imagine yourself in a hospital room in bed after surviving a traumatic event. And your family and your friends are there, and they're all hopeful that you're gonna have a, su a successful recovery. But then the doctor comes in and tells you that you're never gonna be able to walk, move your legs, or stand again. And unfortunately, you've lost control of your bowel, your bladder, and your sexual function, among many other problems. And now I want you to imagine your life today, going out with your friends, hanging out on a date, but imagine that with these complications. Imagine how it would change the way you do things, or it might even stop you doing anything at all. Now you can open your eyes. See, for me, it was August 26, 2010. I was 26 years old. I was at work making a delivery, and I was driving down the freeway. When I had a tire blowout, it sucked me into the median, and I got caught in that cable fencing, and it caused my vehicle to roll over and I was ejected out the window. And from that, my life changed. Because it left me in a situation that I wasn't prepared for. I sustained a life-threatening injury. I broke four ribs, my sternum, both my lungs had collapsed, my brain was bleeding, and I had a spine injury at a T5 which left me paralyzed from the chest down. And I was told that I had to get used to my life in a wheelchair because that was the way it was gonna be. And when people think about someone who's paralyzed, they think, well, that person can't walk. 
But there is so much more to it than that. People have to battle blood clots, bladder infections, even pressure sores. There's a man who's on the board of the Christopher Reeve Foundation who is also living with a paralysis. But he said it best, I'm not gonna die prematurely because I can't walk. I'm gonna die prematurely because one of these other complications. I was the fourth person to go through this epidural stimulator project. And with my injury, I'm an Asia A, which means I have no sensation, no feeling, or no bit of movement below my injury point. And the doctors told me when this device was gonna be turned on, they didn't know what to expect. But within days, I was moving my legs, my toes, my ankles. I was also beginning to stand. And even more surprisingly, I was getting autonomic, autonomic function recovery. I was getting improvements in my bowel, my bladder, my sexual function. I mean, and that is huge. And finally, people like me who are living with a paralysis, now we can all embrace a four-letter word. When we were told that recovery wasn't impossible, that there's hope, hope that one day we will get out of these wheelchairs. But more importantly, today we can live a healthier life, get our independence back, and just improve the quality of life that once we had. Now, when the doctor told me that I was never gonna walk again, I made a vow to myself that I was gonna put in the work and I was gonna do whatever it took to make something happen. Now, for the research, this is that 90 cell phone that Will was telling you about. It's a little bit older, and the way it works is like Bluetooth. It holds up next to my side here, and I can turn it on. I mean, and that's pretty cool too. I mean, how many guys do you know that can turn themselves on? I mean, I don't know what else you would need me to say. I don't know what else I can say. This, this is why we are here. This is why the big idea matters. This is why we need the research to go into the next phase. And this is why we need your help. And there are three ways that you can get involved with the Reeve Foundation so that millions of more people, hopefully, like Dustin, can get what they deserve to get up and out of their wheelchairs forever. And number one is to invest. We're 60% of our way to our goal, but we need individual and corporate support for this research. Number two is to partner. A party or a conference is only as good as its guests, and we need the right guests to further the conversation for this research. And number three is to advocate. Tell people what you saw here today, because we must mobilize and unite we must mobilize and unite so that more people like Dustin will get this opportunity. So spread the word on the big idea. And finally, my dad said, it's up to us. We have the power to make a difference. And that is so true today. Together, we can make an enormous difference because this is our moment. This is our movement. This, the big idea, is the beginning of the end of paralysis. Thank you.